Okay, welcome back everybody. And in this lesson today, we're going to be learning how to remove scratches and specks from an image or dust uh, and ink from images. And as you can see, I have this picture of this young gentleman here who's got, a, he's uh, seen some better days with this photograph, uh, but there are a lot of white specks here going on on the image. And we're going to remove those using a couple tools that are really useful for that. Also, we're going to go over to this ancestors image. And we're going to use the same concepts here to remove this, the specks around her neck and uh, on the shirt. And here you can see there's an ink stain or something over here on the shirt. So we're going to be working with the healing brush and the spot healing brush tool, which is basically the Band-Aid tool over here on the toolbar below the red eye tool. And we're going to be using that to remove these specks. Another thing I'd like to do uh, at the end is I'll add a vignette effect to this image since it's already kind of getting this circular uh, section down here. I want to add the vignette where basically we blur out the corners. And on this old image here, I think I'm going to add a sepia tone to give it more of an antique feel to it. So instead of black and white, we'll, we'll add sepia. So you're going to get a, a probably a couple of different lessons here, but we're going to take it to the next level. I'm going to start here with this uh, young gentleman. And the first thing you'll notice, the background layer is locked. And as I've mentioned in the past, the way to unlock is to Alt double click or to um, uh, Option double click if you're on a Mac. So we just double click and automatically we get the lock out of the way here. And now we're on layer zero. Now, another method you can use is to actually create a new layer. And to create a new layer, uh, would be where you just drag the layer down onto this new post-it note here and it should automatically create a copy. Now this is known as a non-destructive edit so this way all of my editing can be done on this new, new layer and the original information will still remain on the layer zero here and then I can turn it on or turn it off at any time and uh, see the original. So it's, it's up to you how you want to do this but if you really want to work with the original you can just keep the same layer and just unlock it or you can just create a new layer. Now again, I created a new layer just by dragging it down to the post-it note and it created a copy or I could have done a uh, control J or a command J on a Mac to uh, get that layer copy as well. But I don't want that. I've got too many of these copies already so I'm just going to drag this to the trash and there we go. So I'm going to work on this layer zero copy here and I can give that a new name if I wanted to. I could double click and call it layer one for example or whatever I want. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to my toolbar and make sure that I have the spot healing brush tool. Now, the way I get to that is I hold the uh, my cursor, my left mouse button down on the um, Band-Aid tool and immediately the submenu comes up and I can see that I have two uh, options here. The spot healing brush tool and the healing brush tool are one and the same except the spot healing brush tool will randomly pick the pixels from the surrounding area and lay them underneath where my cursor is. The healing brush tool, I can I can pick and choose myself, so it's not as random uh, as it is with the uh, spot healing. The spot healing, however, uh, just as well as the healing brush, the minute the pixels are applied with their color, it automatically blends uh, into the image. So a little bit different from some other tools where you're automatically getting a blend. Now right away I can see that my brush is too big. Uh, it's covering up his entire face for the most part. What I can do is I can go to this size menu here in the control panel here at the top and I can grab the pull down and I can change the size by, by sliding it over. Or I can do the uh, hard brackets, open hard bracket will decrease the size and open, uh, close hard bracket will increase the size. So uh, I can just hit that and it'll increase and decrease and as you can see here I'm hitting the keyboard. There's the close hard bracket and here's the open hard bracket making it smaller. And I want it to be just small enough so that way it doesn't cover too much, but it's going to cover enough. For example, it's big enough to cover this white spot over here, big enough to cover these white spots over here. Again, with the spot healing brush tool selected, spot healing, I know it's selected because it has a little box here on the left hand side. I'm going to come over to one of these spots and I'm just going to click and immediately it gets filled in with the surrounding pixels. Now, you may get a situation where it's going to randomly select pixels from a spot where it does have a problem, and you can just go over it again and it'll randomly pick from somewhere else. So for example, this one little dot here is not surrounded by any other problems, so if I click, it should be fine, and there it is, it disappears. However, when you get into the corner here where there's a lot of other spots, it's possible that as I click, 
I might actually pick from the pixels that have, have spots in them themselves. And as you can see, I just did that. I clicked in this upper corner and it picked from the pixels right here. So I just come back over and I click on it again and it should go away because it's going to pick randomly from another spot. So I'm going to do that a couple times. I'm just going to click around and here again, I just picked up pixels from this spot. So this may be a situation where I want to use the healing brush tool to, to specifically pick from the sample I want. So I'm going to go to this healing brush tool here click and hold the band-aid tool for a second and then I'm going to highlight the healing brush and let go. Now the difference between the healing brush and the spot healing was the healing brush is going to allow me to select where I want the pixels to come from. The spot it was randomly picking from different locations. So for example if I wanted to pick from pixels from here I would click on the alt key or the option key on a Mac and I get this little target symbol. Now it looks like a target like if I was looking through a gun um, scope I could see this is a target. When I left click I now create a sample. So no matter where I put it, you can see now that dark spot from the pixels that are over here are inside of my cursor and they follow my cursor wherever I go. So I could literally come over here into this corner now and notice it automatically covers up those little spots because it's pulling from the pixels down here where I sampled from. And I can just click and let go and immediately not worry about it trying to pick up these other spots. Now here's the thing about this too. If I click and drag, you'll note that there's a crosshairs down at the bottom which mimics exactly where I was starting from. So that's my original spot. And so I can keep painting now and literally grab. Now I don't want to go into the shirt here because now I'm starting to paint his shirt and if I let go it'll blend that shirt image inside of the background there and I don't want that so I'm going to undo with a control Z and I'm going to try this again so I'm just going to come over here and just paint in this area and watch where that crosshair is going so I don't accidentally hit the shirt and if I get too close I'm going to stop and let go and now you can see it blended those dark pixels into that space and it looks really good. Now, when you're using the healing brush tool, it's a good idea to keep resampling. So I'm going to target a new area here, and then I'm going to come over here and paint. So the point here is, is if you keep resampling, uh, and I got too much of this line right here. Let me get rid of this line, actually. Uh, I'm going to grab my spot healing brush tool, and I'm just going to draw a straight line on the spot healing brush. Not too close to the face, because it might pick up the flesh tones. That's gone. Now I can continue using, oh, I'm going to keep using the spot healing brush tool at this point. Again, now I'm getting too close to the face, so I'm just going to do spots. And this is why the spot healing brush tool is caught. Spot healing is because I'm just clicking on a spot and blending those pixels away. All right, so no problems at this point, just spot healing as I go here, just clicking every so often and getting those spots out from the background. Now I haven't yet done his hair or his face or his suit. Okay, I was kind of reserving it for the background because it's all blended with the same color. Now, for example, there's a suit, a, a spot here on the suit, the scratch. And if I click, more than likely I'll get a nice blend where the it figures out the edge of the suit and everything works out okay. Sometimes it doesn't work out. I might have to undo and redo it again. But in this case, I just clicked right there on the edge and it, it did work out okay. And so you want to be aware of that when you get close to edges where there are spots. You want to be aware that it might behave in a way that you didn't expect and uh, might cause problems. Uh, so just uh, be cautious when you go near a, an edge between uh, varying colors. Now I'm going to go here in his hair and I'm just click right here in the hair. See it's working out really well. Now there is an edge between the hair and the, and the forehead here so I need to be careful of that. Actually I'm going to shrink my brush size down a little bit just until the dot fits or the scratch fits inside of my brush. This way I'm not picking up a lot of pixels and not going to be blending too much. That's going to make it look odd. So again, just enough to cover up the scratch, but not enough to, to make the image look odd. Okay, and I've got a few more here on his jacket. I'm going to do in this dark area. All right, near the buttons here. Okay, so the point here is that uh, I am getting rid of these spots using the spot healing brush and the healing brush tool. Again, the healing brush tool lets me sample uh, target a sample of where I want the pixels to come from. Spot healing randomly samples pixels from the surrounding area and tries to figure it out. And it doesn't work 100% every time. Um, but both do blend the pixels in when they're done so they look natural and it looks like it was always there. Alright, so that looks good enough. I've gotten rid of all of those spots. And if I come over here to the layers panel, you'll see that I can hit the visibility icon and I can turn it off so you can see what the original looked like and you can see where we're currently at right now. So it's pretty good progress here. Alright, next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to add 
the uh, sepia tone effect. And sepia tone, well, I'll make it look like it's a, a photo uh, that's been uh, faded over time or uh, gives it that uh, antique kind of look. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to the Enhance menu here across the top. And I'm going to go down to Adjusting the Color here in this list. And in this list, I will be able to go to Color Variations. And typically what you do with sepia is you uh, increase red and decrease blue. So for example, I'm going to come over here into this section, and Midtones is selected over here. I'm going to decrease the blue a little bit, but then I'm going to increase the red, and that gives me sepia tone. And that can be done for anything. Now, if I think it's too bright, I can lighten that up by clicking the Lighten here. Okay. Again, uh, I'm going to darken that up because I actually liked it the way it was. But you decrease the blue a little bit, increase the red, and it should give you a nice sepia tone look. And um, I can click OK at this point, and there it is. Okay, So that's the first image, and it uh, looks pretty good, and I'm happy with it. So I'm going to move on to my ancestor's image. Again, if I want to see the original, I turn off the visibility. There's the original, and here's my fixed image.